Hello right bags, this is Joe Plays Games. Welcome to Conan Exiles Mini Access Show. I'm a little bit sick and this might be the last video you see from me for a few days, but I wanted to get this out to you. The update has just gone out onto PC. The Midnight Grove has been in development now for a good seven weeks or being tested on the test live servers on PC. With it is meant to come the pet system as well because that's what it unlocks and a bunch of other features that I'm gonna go through. It does look like there is a delay though. Not a huge one, they reckon around a week or so. But right now, if you're playing Conan Exiles on PC, you're going to be getting the Midnight Grove and the Jabal Sag Religion. You're also going to have changes to your thralls, and you're going to get the new bow and arrow um, sets. What you won't get is the pets. The pets is coming next week, supposedly. So what does this mean for console? Well, according to Twitter posts, it's in actual certification right now for Xbox One and PS4. So that means it could come out maybe Monday or Tuesday next week, or it may take a bit longer if there are obviously any problems. I don't really want to put a concrete date, but a hopeful you know, estimation will be that it comes out at some point next week. So we're going to go over the patch notes, telling you everything that's going on with this update, but we're also going to take a look at a Q&A. A moderator went through the Q&A livestream they did last week, and there's a bunch of features in here I think it's worth talking about including the status of sorcery and mounts. Yes, mounts. Now, I've been saying for months and months that eventually they would be putting mounts into the game, and it looked like for a while they maybe would be running into problems, but it does look like they have still got them planned sometime. So come with me. Let's go. It's the Access Show. Okay, so I've shown you actually how to access the Midnight Grove before. Go and check that video out. The link will be in the description down below, and it will be in the end cards at the end of this video. That was a good few weeks ago now, and there was lots of bugs and problems with that. And so I will be taking another look at that with more proper gameplay now that all the mini bosses have been added. Basically, you go and unlock the religion by finding one of his sons, who happens to be a character that's been in the game for a long time, an NPC. Again, all that information is in the video down below if you really want to get an upper hand and take a look at it if you haven't seen it. Once you have access to the Midnight Grove, you're teleported and it's a basically maze full of these sort of corridors and open areas where you need to fight lots of enemies. There's going to be all sorts of creatures. You've got tigers, you've got panthers, you've got rhinos, lots of wolves as well. Pretty much most of the animals are in there. And eventually, when you've gone through the maze enough and you've found the right way, you'll come across this, a hyena werewolf. Now, they've called it just a werewolf there, so maybe it is just a werewolf. Once you defeat him and eat its flesh, you'll then have knowledge of Jabal Sag and you'll be able to build and construct all the stuff that comes with the religion. So it unlocks a special knife, obviously, that you're going to be utilising on dead bodies. And the idea is that it's meant to be ways to control animals. So you're going to be crafting lots of lures that attract animals and other beasts to wherever they're thrown. This is really super useful maybe if on a PvP you can attract some creatures to you and then lead them on to an enemy encampment. And once the pet update is fully implemented you'll be able to use the laws to maybe get rid of some adult creatures so that you can kidnap the babies and make them your pets. They're also adding the magical mark of Jabal Sag which will offer any creature caught up within it up as a tribute to the Lord of Beasts. In return he may send one of his champions to see if you are still worthy. So basically it's a marker you put on the ground, an enemy creature goes over it, it gets teleported away. Sometimes you'll get something in return and in this way you can gather and kill lots of creatures if you need them resources. Once you get to the top worship altar of Jabal Sag you'll get the deadly claws of Jabal which are really, really devastating. They very much look a little bit like Vega's hand claws from Street Fighter. Now, they were pretty OP in the test live servers. I'm sure they've nerfed them a little bit. Part of the big update, which a lot of people are unhappy with, was the thralls have now got hunger. This is going to be part of the pet system as well, that you're meant to feed your pets certain foods. And if you do so, when you're rearing your pets, you can get super versions of the pets. So they've changed a lot, and these are the final set of results that are going to go forward. You're going to have to feed your thralls every seven days. Companions will be able to eat pretty much anything that's even remotely edible. So you can just feed them gruel, you can feed them special foods, as long as they've got something in them. However, if you do get the thralls preferred diet, they get a bonus buff. So you can get some short term advantages. Whenever you're going into battle or someone's attacking you, get your thrall to eat one of its preferred foods and it'll have that buff on it. And then simply feed them just the normal basic stuff like gruel when you aren't being attacked or you want to make sure they don't decay. There's going to be some sort of food dispenser, thrall pots for thralls and feed box for pets. These will give small amounts of food to each companion before moving on to the next companion. 
the idea of these food dispensers is that you're going to need less food overall if you've got quite a lot of frills or pets. The frill pot is going to be there when you make a wheel of pain and you can craft it at the carpenter's bench. Food will decay very slowly when placed in food dispensers. There will be server options to enable lots of this stuff or disable it. And if you run your own server, you will be able to turn lots of these features on and off. So I'm going to go through stuff that's more relevant to the frills now and then we'll go through the rest of it. Frills now have 50% increased health. That is to bring them in line with some of the other greater pets and make it more interesting to take the frill out for exploration and hunting. Entertain the frills now provide buffs after having been on follow mode. Any pets and frills that get stuck will now teleport back to the location they were deployed. They've also fixed a huge bug that meant frill health was reset into 100 HP. The crocodile boss near Nabatku's pack is no longer stuck and attacks the player and they've fixed an issue where NPCs would stop aggroing after a player teleported several times. They have added a new specialist arrow, so you've got the light arrows, tar arrows, poison arrows, ivory arrows, explosive arrows and healing arrows. I'm going to be showing that off in a little showcase maybe. And of course offhand combat mechanics, so you can basically use your shield and you can use two little mini axes now and stuff like that. They have done some fixes for the purge, which is one of the most criticised features that hasn't received enough love. They've optimised database cleaning to remove inactive clans, better randomization for purge spawn options, and distracted purgers will no longer get sidetracked by random point of interest. The countdown has been reset to 15 minutes initially as well. So in terms of new content, they've added the werewolves, added night vision potions so you'll be able to see in the dark. If you're really bothered by people writing lots of profanities on signs, you can now actually remove that so that you won't see what anyone else is writing if they're not in your guild. And beehives now require queen bees to produce honey. This was one of the big factors that a lot of people were upset with as well. The beehives behave differently. They will collect honey over time, but worker bees and queen bees will produce a lot more honey than an empty beehive. They've also made changes to fishing as well, and preservative box inventory space is increased. If you've got ice in a box, the food will not decay. So, the combat animations or combat features are the sword, axe, mace and shield, heavy chain will now have shield bashes, thrown axes are now part of your heavy chain combos, especially when wielded with swords, axes and maces. They've got a new attack to the spider tarantula boss, new attacks to the crocodile boss, got new knockback setup and animations for monsters, new rock nose animations, added new idol and fret animations, and updated surface swimming to work with a glow stick. They've made a bunch of in-game UI changes as well. You can zoom out even further on the map now. You can also go to the menu once you've gone through character creation. And there's now a button to list down servers. Now, big ones for balancing, and some of these that I'm gonna go through, by the way, if you're new to my channel, I do this often. I'll go through every patch note so you can listen to it while you get about and do other stuff. Vaults have much lower hit points and will decay faster, but their max inventory size has been increased from 200 to 300. They've made more changes to areas they don't want you building and have put climbing blockers and building blockers on them, particularly the city of Ataris or Skelos, the exiles camp between the sands swept ruins and drifters rest, and the NPC village in Dexwab's retreat. A few changes to certain weapons, so the epic version of Conan's Atlantean sword is now more durable than its mid-grade equivalent, and they've rebalanced armor bonuses to stats. Acheron, longsword, spear and war axe should no longer be more powerful than star metal equivalents, and avatar special attacks now damage buildings with the correct amount of damage. Now supposedly the avatars are still undergoing more changes, and it's all going to be part of the siege system rebalancing. Now there's quite a few general bug fixes, I'm not going to go through all of them, just pile out a couple that I think are interesting. So NPC patrols around camps hopefully have been fixed. Status effects, journey steps and crosshairs will now be removed temporarily when cinematics trigger. All sloped wall pieces now detract the same amount of stability. Fix the bug where the noxious gas debuff would wear off even when standing in the gas. Hatch frames can now snap to walls, door frames and frame pieces. Giant snakes and alpha snakes will now drop reptile hides when harvested. You should now be able to harvest crimson lotus flower with sickles. Jungle birds now drop heads. Glowing sticks should now be used underwater. You're now able to place walls next to stairs. Fix an issue where the witch queen could be engaged behind the magical barrier. Fix an issue where placeables would disappear if the base of the item was slightly below ground. Fix an issue where you could override the corruption limit by drinking corruption brew. Fix the bug where bedroll map marker would disappear after respawn. Avatar lifetime option is no longer missing in single player game. Carpets should now disappear when foundations are destroyed. 
fixed an exploit where players could push themselves under the map using ceilings and climbing, fixed an issue where after unlocking a new arrow type, the arrows wouldn't be used up when used from the radial quick bar. The altar Yima has been brought in line with the other altars in terms of what you need to craft it, and Jinora Battleborn should now spawn as intended. Couple exploits that fixed an issue where full inventories could be exploited to carry more items than intended, and fixed the bug where archer falls would produce infinite amount of special arrows. A few changes that are meant to just improve the game are merchants have their names and now marked as merchant rather than fighter. Planters are no longer semi-indestructible when attacked with a trebuchet. Arch priests of Yog should now use the correct weapon rather than a Yog cleaver. Remove the ability to apply weapon damage kits to torches as it was causing bugs. Fixed missing collision on chest placed on the roof of the well of Skelos. Items currently listed as ingredients in the crafting process will no longer be displayed as an available resource. Honey now stacks up to 100. War paints will also now cover your forearms and a bunch of other improvements including sound improvements. There are some dedicated server launcher issues as well, but that's mostly PC. So there you go, quite lengthy and quite a meaty update. The dungeon is fun, the religion is pretty cool, and the avatar himself, Jabal Sag, is very, very cool. I liked him indeed. The pet system is really gonna introduce a little bit of extra, you know, polish to the game and something else to go and do. Whether or not it's more just an upgrade on the frills, I'm not sure. And whether or not the AI of the frills and the pets needs a total rebalance, that is something I could probably see a lot of people asking for. Funcom had a lot of ideas during early access, and not everything made it through to the final game. The last few months has been quite hard to pinpoint exactly what they're going to bring out and what they're not, and it did seem like they were winding progress down. Particularly, as I said, lots of developers have been moved on to other projects. But they have done a Q&A, and judging by what Joel Bylos gave an interview with Firespark a little while ago about, they do have plans for Conan still. So there's a bunch of Q&A questions and answers in here. I'm just going to cherry pick the ones that I think are pretty most interesting. Sorcery amounts is probably one of the biggest and most talked about stuff. I think it was a real shame they didn't get sorcery in for launch. And the fact we've had some sort of sorcery bar with the corruption really didn't lend itself to the rest of the game. But they have said they're going to be working on it. And this follows on from what Joel, the creative director, mentioned in an interview recently as well. But both sorcery and mounts are in the pipeline. And I'm pleased to see the mounts. I did a video a good few months ago talking about Conan Exiles and mounts coming. A lot of you guys were trying to tell me that mounts could never be implemented into the game. They'd caught Joel saying that it wasn't possible because the map wouldn't render quickly enough. And at the time I called bullshit on it. If Minecraft can fix loading chunks in, if Ark can fix loading chunks in, then there's nothing stopping Conan Exiles having the same ability. And so it looks like mounts will be coming. Now, I don't want to say when they're going to come. I honestly don't see any of this stuff happening until after Christmas. With the way it's taken seven weeks to get the pets right through test live servers, I really can't see any of this content coming until after Christmas. But, as you can see again, it's been reiterated from the Q&A that both sorcery and mounts are in the pipeline. The focus is going to be on making sure the pets is running completely, and with it coming out next week, and there may be another couple weeks of hot fixing, doesn't look likely they're going to be really touching on it for another three or four weeks yet. But we do know that sorcery is going to be the next real focus, and that may be before the mount system. They're going to be focusing on dual weapons and new weapons, but not just yet. Throne axes have crippling on them to stop people running away so easily, and overall they're going to be going through a lot of work to do with the spears. Currently though, they won't be having two different weapons in each hand, so you're not going to be able to carry a great big massive sword and a great big axe. It's going to be either something like a small dagger and a sword, or two small daggers. If you was hoping for more unique stuff to help with your character creations, probably not. According to the Q&A live stream, they didn't really go into too much detail, and it wasn't on their priorities list. So bows are obviously really important. We just had all the new arrows come in, and bows have been just been that one thing that hasn't been right since the game was in early access. But according to the new update, and according to Oscar, the guy that actually creates a lot of this stuff, bows are pretty much in a good spot right now. But they are maybe looking at buffing them a little bit, particularly power shots. Throne axes and javelins are going to see some changes, but I didn't say whether it's going to be positive or negative. So a little while ago, they did say they were going to be bringing out a bunch of new dungeons. In fact, at the time, we thought there was going to be at least three more dungeons added to the game. And with the Midnight Grove being part of the Jabal Sag religion, it didn't really seem like there was much room. 
but they looks like they're going to be improving some of the existing ones and bringing out another four dungeons. Each dungeon is going to have a different theme and a boss. Each dungeon is in different stages of development though. The test live servers which have been running the pets update for the last seven weeks will receive some of these dungeons very soon. Bosses are going to be updated across the board and lots of mechanics are going to be changed or moved about. Now a lot of you guys are really unhappy that there's no actual way to talk or chat in Conan Exiles and that doesn't look like it's changing any further. Lots of you have also said that it just doesn't work very well when you use in game chat. Apparently they've got no plans to improve it. For some reason crossplay seems to be the magical word with everyone and to be honest I'm not that bothered. You'd really have to be a try hard developer to be putting in crossplay for every single game out there. So no, it's not something they're going to be looking at. The Purge is also going to be taking a look at again. Oscar did say they might add a brand new pass over aggressive and passive commands for Thralls as an overall, you know, general look at them. Now to me the Thralls are dumb as shit, they don't have particularly good AI and it'd be nice to see a real improvement in them. The Purge is obviously in need of more fixing as well, it never really has worked as intended so that is what they're probably going to be hopefully working on in the next big update. Thralls will start returning to your base, no longer will you end up just leaving Thralls littered around the land, after 10 minutes they will start going back. You'll also be able to find out exactly how what they've got in trouble with in the event logs. You'll also be able to attack what you attack, so this will help with Thralls getting stuck a lot of the time. Obviously with the teleportation system that's going to basically be it, it's going to fix it to that. This falls in line a little bit with their sort of city planning part. Is one of the big things of having a proper settlement where you could actually control your thralls by setting them paths that they would patrol. So this is a good sign that these changes are coming quite soon. Lots of changes to event logs, you're going to see lots of updates telling you exactly what your thralls done and if it's died. They're looking into being able to rename both pets and thralls but there's issues with Xbox and the PS4 systems. And this is maybe why they've also not implemented in-game chat. There is meant to be a third DLC and as far as I'm aware it's meant to be the final DLC but there won't be any free brand new building pieces added. Now one of the big things about the numbers dwindling on Conan Exiles is can you merge the servers, bringing people closer together. Firespark did go through this quite a bit on Steam and said that they should maybe look at reducing the amount of servers and that forces players to play together more but according to the devs they don't have any plans for that just yet. What they have done is added the weekends where you get double XP in PvP. That's meant to give you a chance to get yourself up to the same level as the server alphas. In terms of stat bonuses and attributes, there's maybe not so many changes coming. But the question was, would you consider removing all attribute bonuses on armor and instead use armor kits to get the stat bonuses you want? Oscar says he'd very much rather make all attributes useful in PvP and also making it sure that secondary attributes are going to be more attractive so that you're going to have to really think about what you want on your armor. They did mention as well that DLC armors are a different matter and are still being talked about on what they want to do with regards. Now I've been saying this since the DLC first came out that the armors often give some sort of mini advantage and in that way to my eyes they're paid to win. I've had lots of arguments with you guys about it but the last DLC really did show up that there were certain sets that were more beneficial than getting regular ones if you bought the DLC. If you was ever hopeful of having multiple worlds to load your game in, maybe you wanted a world just for yourself, maybe other worlds for you and your friends to play on, they've got no real plans to implement that. It is on the list but it isn't a high priority. Now for console, if you ever wanted mods on Conan Exiles, which I don't think they're that amazing to be honest, I still haven't seen any mods that have blown me away like they did with Ark Survival Evolved, they have said that basically no. They look at the mods that are there, they look at the ones that are downloaded the most by players, and then they take maybe some core ideas from that and see if there's ways they can implement it themselves. But there doesn't seem to be any plans to bring any mods to console. They're about to make an auto mod downloader available so it'll automatically do everything in one go as soon as you click start game and they're also looking at ways to improve memory when loading in buildings in the game so that hopefully you don't get lots of horrible pop-ups or just lots of lag around big bases. One of the questions was that crafting setups are like factories sometimes some players will have 20 furnaces lined up or 200 honey pots. Oscar says they're hoping to change that so you can make things in bulk and that would make sense. Arc does that obviously with its fabricator and it's pretty much the same sort of thing. 
They're also hopefully looking to improve visually what the crafting stations will achieve when they're at higher level and that you'll get higher tiers being more expensive but more valuable. And that is pretty much it. In summary, I think it at least shows they've got a rough roadmap of what they want to achieve and it's the most information we've had for a while exactly what they're going to be adding to the game. Now, whether or not they actually come through and deliver some of this stuff, who knows, and whether or not it will just be a bit too late. As I've said, we're looking really at the middle of October to get the pet update on Xbox One and PS4. When you take into account how long it took to get that system in the game and the number of weeks on test live, I just can't see any of the other things like sorcery or mounts being added until after Christmas. By then, I'm really fearful that Conan Exiles will definitely be forgotten by then. And it is that time of year where AAA games really do get played a lot more than some of these smaller games. So let me know in the comments section down below. Is any of the stuff I spoke about today going to be beneficial? Is it going to keep you hopefully waiting and playing Conan Exiles that lot longer? Are you happy with where Conan Exiles is at the moment? Or what other stuff do you really want to see and focus on? I am Jay Plays Games. I will hopefully be back with some core gameplay, showing you some of the new stuff and showing you all how to defeat the mini bosses. Until then, Rat Bags, I will see you a lot later.